Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are gonna be doing another video that is inspired by Samantha Ravindahl. I feel like I've been doing so many videos inspired by Sam. She's just been coming up with like the best video ideas. So Sam basically did a video where she spoke about products that have somewhat replaced her like holy grail favorites. And I thought that that was a genius idea. And I have so many holy grail products. I, I don't get like that attached to makeup, but when I find makeup products that just like speak to me on a whole nother level that take the status of a holy grail product, I I become ride or die with them. They don't leave my side. I rebuy them over and over and over again. Saying that I have found a product that I've been like choosing over these Holy Grail favorites is is a big statement. And it's really not to say that I don't use these Holy Grail products anymore because I definitely do. And they're still considered Holy Grail products. I mean, I feel like a Holy Grail product is always gonna be a Holy Grail product, but there have been other products in my life that have, you know, just, just, dabbled, <laughs> dabbled in the holy grail water. It's gonna be a fun one. I hope you guys are, are excited. Don't forget to let me know down below in the comments if you have any um, products that have replaced your personal holy grails. I would really, really love to know. I think that could be a really fun little discussion that we could have in the comment section. It gives you a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe if you wanna join the fam. Without further ado, Let's get into it. I just wanna say in advance, I'm so sorry if the lighting is going in and out. I'm I'm filming at a very odd time in the day. It's like 3.30, I normally film in the morning. So, oh, there just went again. The sun is just going in and out and there's nothing I can really do about it. So I apologize for that. I hope that it's not too annoying, but l l let's just look past it for today's video. It's gonna drive me so crazy when I'm editing. Let's get this one out of the way. Everybody knows that I'm obsessed with the A Cosmetic CC Cream. I say it, maybe in every single video. For me, it's really just like the perfect foundation product. It gives me the perfect amount of like light to medium coverage. It's pretty dewy, which I love because I have a drier skin type. Um, it also just feels super lightweight. It's long wearing. It has an SPF of 50. It smells good. It feels good. It's just an all around really great product. I recommend it to literally everybody. But recently, there has been a product that I have been using over this product almost every single day, and that is the YSL Touche Eclat All-in-One Glow Foundation. Now, this is definitely a newer product in my life. I think I only very recently started talking about it on my channel. I would say really the only difference between the YSL Touche Eclat and the It Cosmetics CC is that the YSL Touche Eclat All-in-One Glow is definitely a little bit glowier. I think the reason why I have been reaching for this over my It Cosmetics CC is because I have just been so obsessed with glowy skin. I, truly one of my daily goals is just to make my skin look as glossy and sweaty and just damp as possible because it's it's just a look that I'm really, really into right now. And I feel like this product is the one that is just giving me the most gorgeous glowy skin. So that is why I've been reaching for this one over my A Cosmetics CC. And I never really thought I would find a day where I would find a product that was as comparable to the A Cosmetics CC, but I like even more. But I think Okay, moving on to the other big guy, the Maybelline Lash Sensational. This is the limited edition Gigi Hadid version, so just sort of try and ignore that. The uh, original Lash Sensational that, that I love is also in the pink tube with the black writing. Now the Lash Sensational is another Holy Grail product that I've spoken about my channel probably as long as I've spoken about the A Cosmetics CC. It has been in my life for a really long time. It has also been my go-to mascara for a very, very long time. It's just one of those go-to mascaras for me that does it all. It curls my lashes, it lengthens, and it volumizes, and it lasts really, really well. And it's also from the drugstore, so of course it is affordable. But I actually found a uh, drugstore mascara that I have found myself just being way more drawn towards and just liking, honestly, a little bit more than my Maybelline Lash Sensational, and it is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. Now, it's really funny because when I first tried this product, I actually did not like it at all. When this was first released, people were going crazy over over. And when I tried it, I honestly wasn't that impressed. I just thought it was like an okay mascara. I would say like a month, a month and a half ago, I picked it out of my collection and I have uh, fallen in love ever since. And I think the key to this mascara is when this is just a touch dried out because when you first buy this, this is a pretty wet mascara. And I personally don't love mascaras that are really, really wet because I find that it just makes my lashes a little bit clumpy. I find it's not as easy to build up and I do prefer like a drier formula, but this is just another mascara that really does it all for me. It makes my lashes look so voluminous and long. It curls them. I also prefer the brush 
to the Maybelline Lash Sensational. Um, I tend to be a little bit more partial towards brushes that are uh, softer, that have more of like that natural fiber texture. I also find that it makes my lashes look fluffier as well. It gives it more of like a wispy effect. I feel like I'm like breaking up with makeup right now. It's it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> so now let's move on to what I'm wearing on my lips. Now I want to talk about the Marc Jacobs lip glosses. This is another product that I've spoken about for such a long time on my channel. I've always said that the Marc Jacobs enamored lip glosses have been and will, will probably forever be one of my favorite lip gloss formulas. I just love the consistency and the way that these glosses make my lips look. They, they really do a great job of just glossing your lips up, making them look really, really shiny and almost like glass-like, but being very comfortable at the same time and just having the perfect amount of pigmentation. This is another Marc Jacobs lip product that for me has sort of completely replaced the Marc Jacobs lip glosses because they sort of like do what the Marc Jacobs lip glosses do, but do it one better. So this lip product over here is actually a little stick. It's not actually a gloss, but it is called a hydrating lip gloss stick. I am wearing it on my lips right now, and you can see how stunning this product is. So this is sort of like a hybrid between a gloss and a sheer lipstick. So it really is like a one and done type of product. Like you could apply this and it sort of just gives you a nice sheer wash of color and such an intense shine. Now, normally I wouldn't compare these two because technically they're not really even like in the same product category, but they do give the lips a really, really similar effect. But I find that the hydrating gloss stick really just like, it takes what the gloss is and it just bumps it up another level. What I love so much about these hydrating gloss sticks is that they give your lips the same type of gloss that the Marc Jacobs glosses give. So you could see I'm wearing this color right over here on my lips right now in the shade Sweet Escape and it gives my lips like such an amazing glass-like shine. The actual texture is really similar to the gloss as well in that it feels like nothing on my lips. It actually is even more comfortable than the gloss, I would say, because it doesn't have any type of stickiness whatsoever. Like it really just feels like a bomb. This is not to say that this completely replaces the Marc Jacobs glosses. But for me, when I would really want like a very, very intense glossy look, I would typically reach for my Marc Jacobs glosses. But instead, recently I've been reaching for the hydrating gloss sticks because I find that it just gives such like a prettier effect to my lips. And I just, I love the texture. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. And they come in such amazing colors as well. This color over here is Sugar Sugar um, in the gloss form, but they also have the hydrating gloss stick in Sugar Sugar as well. And I reach for the Sugar Sugar hydrating gloss stick over the actual gloss all the time. All right, let's move on to some powders. So the RCMA No Color Powder was a holy grail powder of mine for a very, very long time. This was a powder that I loved because it was sort of like a no frills type of powder. It just got the job down without really much fuss whatsoever. I mean, you could see the packaging really isn't anything too crazy exciting. It literally looks like a salt or pepper shaker. I found that this set my makeup. It didn't alter the color of my makeup. I was able to use this underneath my eyes or all over my face and it wouldn't make things darker or lighter. And to be honest, I never thought that I would find another loose powder that I liked as much as this until the Hourglass Loose setting powder came into my life. Now I know that the Hourglass one is definitely a much, much higher price point, but it is truly everything I've ever wanted in a powder. And this has been the only powder that I have been using. What makes this powder so special for me is the fact that it will completely smooth out my skin and make it look completely airbrushed. There's no other powder that I've found that actually makes my skin look pretty much poreless. I've also never tried a powder that no matter how many times I apply it throughout the day, no matter how much I actually put on, it will still look like nothing on my skin. This stuff like never looks heavy. I have I have tried to make it look heavy just to like see, see how far I could take it. I would like really bake with this stuff and just like pack on a lot of the powder and then brush it off and it still looks like perfection. It's incredible. If you are like me, you hate powder, you're still trying to look for a powder that works for you, I really, really do recommend giving the Hourglass Veil Loose Setting Powder a try because I was never a powder believer, but this this one made, made me a believer. <laughs> that is so dramatic, but you guys get the point. All right, let's talk setting spray, shall we? Now, MAC Fix Plus is a setting spray that I will always have in my makeup collection, even if I find like 30 other setting sprays that I like more than MAC Fix Plus. I feel like this is just 
such a makeup staple for me. So this is not to say that like I will never be using MAC Fix Plus ever again because this is still a product that like I keep on my vanity and I still do use. But there is another setting spray that I find myself definitely preferring over the MAC Fix Plus. The Coralie Beauty Elixir is just like a little bit higher on the Holy Grail totem pole. So the one thing that I felt like the MAC Fix Plus was missing for me as far as like a, a setting mist goes is the fact that this wasn't very hydrating. Um, I love to apply a setting spray before applying my makeup because I just feel like it adds a little bit of moisture to my skin and I always prefer the way my foundation looks and applies after spraying my face with a little bit of a, of a mist. Um, and I used to always do with the MAC Fix Plus. I liked it, but I didn't love it for that. The MAC Fix Plus I feel like works really, really well for intensifying eyeshadows and dampening your brush and at the end of your makeup application just making everything look a little bit less like powdery and intense. That's what I love the, uh, the MAC Fix Plus for. But the Cuddly Beauty Elixir really is a setting spray that I feel like actually makes my skin feel a little bit more hydrated before applying my makeup. I also so much more prefer the mist of the Beauty Elixir. I mean, look how fine and beautiful that is. It's stunning. It also smells like a spa. Like every single time I smell this product, it just makes me... So relax. And not only do I like to use this um, before applying my makeup and after applying my makeup, same thing with the with the Fix Plus to sort of like settle down any powderiness. This works really, really well for this as well. But I also like incorporating it into my actual skincare routine. Like I will often spray my face in the morning when I'm feeling a little bit drowsy and maybe I need like a little bit of a pick me up. Just the scent and the feeling of this product really does do the trick for me, honestly. All right, guys, moving on. Let's talk about some brows. So weird to even have this in my hands right now because I have not picked up the Anastasio Brow Wiz in such a long time, but this used to be the only brow pencil I would ever pick up. It was also one of my most repurchased products. Like, I think I went through maybe 20 of these. This product is a product that I still really like. It's still a really nice brow pencil. It's basically just like a very, very, very fine tip pencil and it is a little bit waxy. So it's really great if you wanna create small hair-like strokes in your brows and it's just, it's a nice brow pencil, but um, the benefit precisely, my brow pencil has completely replaced it for me. Really not a huge, huge reason why this pencil has replaced the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I will say that I do feel like the precisely my brow pencil does last a little bit a little bit better on my brows. I actually find that the pencil on the Precisely is a little bit waxier, and because it is just a little bit waxier, it actually will stick onto my skin better than the Anastasia Brow Wiz. Not only that, but I also sort of prefer the packaging. I always had so many issues with the brow pencil actually falling out of the product. It has happened to me so many times. I've never had that issue with precisely my brow pencil. The pencil has never fallen out. And I also just prefer the way the actual pencil is built. Like I actually find that I'm able to grab onto it a little bit more because it is definitely a bit of like a thicker, thicker cylinder. So I feel like it is easier to actually control and use. And there's even a little bit of like a grip where you hold the pencil. And you would think that that wouldn't make the biggest difference in the world. And it doesn't really in like the grand scheme of things, but just in my overall experience of using the product, I do find it to be a little bit more just easier to use and easier to handle. So that's really all I got to say about the brow pencil. So next up, I want to talk about this little pink egg. Up until I would say like six months ago, I would not apply my foundation. I would not apply my concealer without using the beauty blender. And I still do really like the way the beauty blender applies foundation and concealer. It was just a really great tool. It still is is a really great tool. I have not touched a beauty blender like consistently in a really long time. I've definitely used it over the last six months, like here or there, just you know, to see if, if my love still exists for this product. But I keep on going right back to foundation brushes. And this is something that I honestly never thought would happen. I never thought that I would go back to using foundation brushes because I just never liked the way foundation brushes applied my foundation because I always found that it made my foundation look streaky, that it made it look really heavy, that it didn't blend it out properly. Right now in my life, currently, I just feel like brushes work so much better for me um, at blending out my concealer and blending out my foundation. I sort of just feel like using brushes has given my foundation a little bit more of like an airbrushed feel and an airbrushed look. Um, even my really, really light covered foundations, I feel like just get a better finish when I use a brush. And specifically this brush, this has been like my go-to for quite a while. It's the Morphe G36. I just really like 
the shape of this brush. I like how short it is. I like the size. It's not too small. It's not too big. And it just works really well in blending everything out, keeping everything look looking really, really airbrushed and not making any streaks at all. With the Beauty Blender, I would have to buy another one of these like every four months when it would get really, really gross. Even I, if I were to clean it over and over and over again, there was like always a point where there was just no going back. And these are really expensive. They're like 20 bucks a pop. And to have to buy a beauty blender, $20 every like four months, that shit adds up. I'm not into that anymore. I like just cleaning, cleaning good old brush and that's it. So the Mac 217 is probably the most classic makeup tool there is. Like if there's one makeup tool that I would have to say just sort of encompasses the whole beauty community, it truly is the MAC 217. This was the very first brush I think I ever purchased because it's all that everybody would talk about when they were applying their makeup. And there's a good reason. This is a really, really awesome blending brush. It's also a super versatile brush, which is what makes it so great. It's a really nice blending brush, but it's not too fluffy. So you're actually able to use it for so many different uh, areas and uses on the face. You could use it to apply eyeshadow all over the lid. You could of course use it in the in your crease. You could use it to blend things out. You could use it underneath your lash line. Because this is a natural haired brush, it works really beautifully to apply concealer. And I used to use the MAC 217 on so many of my clients when I would apply concealer because it was natural haired. It would just soak up all of the excess product. And because it was also small, I would be able to get very, very close to the lash line without being too invasive because it's not a super large brush. And it's definitely still a brush that I use all the time. Like it's ne never a brush that I'm gonna fully retire, but the Smith 235, I don't know the name off my heart yet. If these two were sitting side by side, I would, I would pick the Smith one. Smith brushes in general are probably some of my favorite brushes. Smith does just such a great job of taking either like a brush that has always been done the same way and sort of just tweaking it even just a little bit to make it so much better. And I think that the 235 is a really great example of that. The thing that makes the Smith brush just a little bit different is that it actually tapers towards the end and it goes to like a very, very slight point. I feel like it is just a little bit more precise. I feel like it does blend color out a little bit, a little bit more. And it's just that like subtle change to the shape of like the classic blending brush that is what makes it so great. So now I wanna talk about my Holy Grail MAC lipstick and its replacement. So MAC Angel, this is just such a classic MAC lipstick. MAC Angel was like the it MAC lipstick to have. It's what all of like the cool celebrities were wearing. And I remember MAC Angel being one of the very, very first MAC lipsticks that I ever got. And it was literally the only lipstick that I would ever wear for such a long time. And I do believe this is the only lipstick I've ever completely finished. The finish of this lipstick though is what sort of, you know, makes me not wanna use it so much anymore. It is a frost finish and that's not really my favorite. Back in the day, I didn't really care, but nowadays I do prefer more of like a cream or a sheer finish. The frost finish, however, just looks a little bit frosty on the lips and it's just not a look that I like to go for anymore. So it's not really a lipstick that I've picked up in a while. The MAC lipstick though, that has sort of replaced uh, MAC Angel as like my holy grail, neutral, nude, everyday type of MAC lipstick sick is Honey Love. This is another new tube. I think I have like two or three tubes of this. It's one of the most gorgeous nudes that doesn't lean too pink or too beige or too peach. It's sort of just that perfect flattering nude color that's not too light and not too dark. And it's also a matte finish. But what I really like about the MAC matte lipsticks is that they're not drying at all. They're very, very, very creamy. They just don't have like a ton of sheen or shine to them. I, whenever I travel, I always grab my Honey Love and I throw on my makeup bag. I know it's a lip color that will really just go with everything. It will never steal me wrong or anything like that. So yeah, Honey Love has definitely replaced Angel as my Holy Grail MAC lipstick. Let's talk eyeshadow palettes. So the Tarte Clay Play was a Holy Grail of mine for quite some time. It definitely still is. It's probably one of my favorite neutral palettes. I love this palette so much because it had all the basics that I needed and all the basics that were in here were just done so right. It was a go-to of mine for definitely over a year. Like it stayed in my everyday vanity, but I have not taken this out of my makeup collection in such a long time, especially since I got the Anastasia Soft Glam Palette. This has sort of taken over as my favorite holy grail everyday neutral palette. This palette really does have everything 
than I would ever really need or want for an everyday look. What I like more about the Soft Glam also is that there are some fun colors in here as well, which the Tarte Clay Play just doesn't have. You've got all these really cool little metallic shades that are just so fun to apply on the lid when I do wanna like spice things up a little bit. So that's something that I definitely do appreciate, especially for a palette that has all those basic everyday shades. So yeah, this one has sort of, sort of replaced my Tarte Clay Play just a little bit. So guys, that's actually it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful and entertaining. Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts down below. Give this video a big thumbs up and of course subscribe if you are not subscribed already and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!